This is the all new Skoda Kamak and I've come to a location just outside of Strasbourg for a test of this little machine. So hit the subscribe button. Let's check out what makes this car different from a Skoda Scala, if anything. I'm gonna be pretty harsh on this one, I have to say, but anyway, come on, let's have a look on the inside and find out what makes this new Skoda tick. The new Skoda Kamak is based on the same chassis as the Scala and manages to fit between the Croc and the Kodiak. It's a second Skoda model with the lettering on the boot lid instead of the logo. Classed as a city SUV, the Kamak has the largest ground clearance in the segment. Based on Volkswagen Group's MQBA0 platform, Skoda has tried to make it different from its brother, the Scala. Of course, I mean, it's, it's not different to a Skoda Scala. It's based on the same chassis and gearbox and stuff. So when you get in, it feels like one. You feel a little bit more elevated in your seat, I suppose, but that's about it. Now, fit and finish in a Skoda is always good. I have to say, since dawn of time, Skoda has had good interiors. This is no exception. It's a good, very bendy, rubberized. See how bendy that is? It really is. I'm not keen on these screens that look like they're supposed to unplug and walk away with. They're like an iPad you're supposed to plug in. I'm not hugely keen. I'd rather see it blended into the dashboard, but Still, it's a good screen. This one is going to be options. There's a lot of options on this car, Ireland. I'm sorry, this one I'm driving here. This one has sports suspension stuff in the back as well, which gives it dynamic handling. And this screen is going to be different. It's able to talk to you. Skoda showing the way of what it's going to do next. Uh, but it's good. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with any of it. It's just a lot of options, right? Now, um, moving across, the steering and seating position is actually really good. You're very upright. You are able to have a panoramic view around you on all windows. They've put in little three quarter windows back there as well to make sure you can see everything. Um, this dashboard is lovely. There's a good glove box on this side over here, which has an alcohol test in it. Wow. Why would you, oh, you're supposed to have, I think you're supposed to have them by law in France uh, and Switzerland, which is where I was and am at the same time. But moving down the center here, I have manual controls for the air conditioning system. This is a seven speed DSG, also available in six speed manual. This has USB-C as standard as the connector. Now, Skoda, knowing that we're not lunatics, we don't all buy the latest phone of everything, have given me a lightning to USB-C cable, which is available. Uh, you can get it. I'm sure some canny dealers in Ireland will stock these just to make sure somebody's tweeting at me or something there. Um, uh, this one has auto park on it as well. It has different driving modes to go with it. Uh, there is a lovely little convenient um, single bottle opener system here. You just put it into the cup holder and turn it and take the lid off the bottle. Very good. And there's a key holder built into that as well. There's a little tiny glove box here, which wouldn't hold much. Door bins are large though, will hold uh, bottles of water, motorbikes again. Uh, there is the little door bin on the side as well, which is a Skoda thing. Um, starting it up, I really think Skoda is time to move that start button to there or somewhere. I'll tell you why. Your instinct when you get in, because there's still a key, is to go. Anyway, that fizzy little one liter um, starts up outside. It is only a one liter that's in this car as well, but it's actually really good. I've been out in the motorway doing 130 here in France. No problem whatsoever to that engine, seems very good. Can't tell you about fuel economy, neither can I tell you about longevity because I haven't driven a gigantic amount. It seems okay, but then you wouldn't know over time. Um, and uh, longevity, these engines aren't on the market very long, so I don't know. I've had no complaints with it so far. That's all I can say to you at the moment. Uh, dashboard in front of me here in this one is all electronic right that is an option on your cars at home you can change this where the screen setup is um, I do find in the Skoda Volkswagen say Audi range at the moment this electronic dashboard comes in various flavors um, you can, it, it's basically one dash that they've reskinned to do other jobs but it is there it's very informative very good very bright very clear and probably worth your extra bit of money on an option if that's going to be your choice there i would go for that i think that would pay you back as an option later on also available on the options list as well is this large screen so this big wide screen here is actually quite nice it has gesture control on it as well so you're able to make it change screens without touching it so i can do this 
can bring out that screen and I can do that and bring that screen away. It's quite nice. The gesture control is quite cool. Don't know how useful it is in everyday life. I'm not too sure it would be. This one has heated seats in the two, so there's plenty of options on this car that I really like. Now, thinking about being small, we're going to have a look at the back seat now. So make sure you hit the subscribe button because this is the general test for everything. We're going to have a quick look in the back and then I'm going to go through that infotainment system for you step by step. Come on. So back seat is plenty big. Right, that seat set for me, as I showed you, and I can fit my two fists and a bit between me and that seat there in front of me. Um, it has a door pocket, a fairly decent one. This one actually has a tray in the back, which doesn't open properly. How do you open it? Huh? Oh yeah. There we go, it's one of them trays, it's got a little clip there. And it's got a little drinks holder on the side. I like it, that's really good. That's very, that's very good. I like that, that's a good addition. I right, press that again to put it away. One on either side there. I have heated seats in the back of this and two USB-C ports down below at the bottom of that as well and two vents that I can use. Um, there is a center armrest with two cup holders in it. There is no load through system here for the skis and we're in the right country for the skis. The seats do fold flat. <coughs> Once you get them going, there you go. So they fold flat in the flash. And you have a top tether here as well for the uh, isofix on your seat. Very easy to fold flat. Seatbelt does get trapped behind though, Skoda. Just saying. Uh, this one has a panoramic roof from top to bottom. It does brighten the cabin a hell of a lot. I'd like to see one with no, with no roof on it. I'll see that maybe back in Ireland later on. Um, uh, we'll see what that looks like with that up there. LED lights all around, coat hooks on the side. It's very good. Let's have a look at the boot. This is some dude's house over there. Don't know who it is. Could be a ski lift thing. Anyway, uh, this is the boot. It's huge. For a car of a size, got a really big boot. My suitcase is fitted in here along with a laptop bag and a tripod. Absolutely tons of space. There is a um, warning triangle up this side and a first aid kit on this side. There's two big, chunky shopping bag hooks in here. And this has the tail, uh, the tow hook on the bottom as well, which is quite handy. For a car of a size, it's a one litre, don't forget. And a tow hook might be a bad idea. And then it just drops and goes away. Oh, that's very cute. No electronics on it, just releases and lets it down. Um, very clever. Again, removable little uh, flashlight in the boot as well. Yeah, it's a big boot. It's a big boot. It's got 12 volt sockets. It's got four, one, two, three, four, five, five shopping bag hooks. Car wins, best car in the world. End of story. Don't buy anything else, just buy a Skoda Kamak. Let's go for a drive. Driving all right, driving all right. Awesome remind yourself of that. So this uh, Skoda Kamak is something a little bit different from Skoda again. Uh, what we're really looking at here is their next SUV. You know, it's that, it's, that's the direction they're gonna be taking an SUV range. Um, and it's gonna be an interesting take on what they are trying to achieve because the Skoda Karak is a great car, really good car. I like that one a hell of a lot. Uh, my favorite car that Skoda actually make at the moment is the Kodiak out of new ones. Um, but I can see where they're gonna go with the saloons. You know, they're gonna maybe get rid of the saloons in favor of these things, which is a bit of a shame because the Superb goes, it'll be terrible. Or the Octavia, it will be terrible. Now I know maybe there's no plans to do this, but I'm just pointing out the facts of what they're trying to do. Scala has come now, so Rapid is gone, and now we have Kamak, which is brand new to the market. I mean, brand new in the group. You have reached your stop over. I have to stop here? Why would I stop here? It's in the middle of nothing. Please follow the D27 for 12 kilometers. No problem. I will do just that. These corners are really tight. <laughs> but I have dynamic chassis. All is well. Trust the chassis. Infotainment system, I really like it. It's become very complicated in its own little way, but I actually like the fact that Apple CarPlay pops up immediately for you. Um, you can use a very good interactive screen. You can use the gesture control, which does work while you're driving along. I quite like that. And I love this little infotainment screen in front, but the car itself is actually quite nice. The one liter petrol engine pulls very well, cruises nicely, and has a phenomenally quiet cabin on the motorway at speed. I drove down a lovely French motorway today at 130 kilometers an hour. Didn't seem to bother it at all. 
Now, Quebec is no surprise to what Skoda's trying to achieve in the market, but don't forget, Skoda's going to be releasing a rash of electric cars along with the Volkswagen Group very soon. Um, the market is kind of weird because at the same time as these electric cars have been talked about, Volkswagen Group and beyond them is talking about uh, natural gas powered cars. Maybe that won't be a runner in Ireland, but we'll see what happens overseas. You'd be surprised how, how we can take these things on very quickly because electric cars are not a silver bullet. They're not that thing that's going to just magically change everything for everyone because it can't. One, we can't get enough electric batteries or electric engines or cars that are electric. There's not enough of them on the market. Two, where does all the money come from? 49, 50,000 euros. If you're talking about ones that are granted, then you're talking about, still talking about 30 grand for any of these cars starting out. I don't know about that, lads. Given all your money to ESB, Electricity Supply Board, don't know about that one either. There's a lot to think about here. So Skoda has really hit the nail on the head, I think, with this car. They've, they've introduced it just at the right time. This will come in a 1 litre, uh, 1.5 litre, 1.5 litre TSI, and a 1.5 litre diesel as well. So I think a 1.6 diesel, maybe, sorry. Um, that's going to give a good range of flavours. So I'm glad you're able to join me here on the trip through Switzerland and France and onto Strasbourg tonight. So I'm going to add in a few more bits of footage here at the end just to show what else it did as well while it was here, uh, as I always do. Let me know in the comments if you want stuff like vlogs, you know, back behind the scenes versions of these trips because they're not terribly exciting, but I suppose if you've never done one, you might think to be very exciting. So uh, hopefully you've learned all you need to know from the international flavour of the Skoda Kamak and uh, we'll find out more when we get closer to the launch in Ireland. Um, but you can join me over on Twitter, you can find me up on Facebook, you can find me on uh, Instagram, all under the name Bob Flavin. Uh, you can also find the Sunday Service community, which is a little group I set up on Facebook for everybody just to kind of talk about the Sunday Service or meeting up or meetups or whatever it is, uh, which we have to have one before winter. Lots of plans on this channel before winter, so please click the subscribe button. And if you wouldn't mind just checking out the support links down below. There are ways to support this channel. It is entirely free, but it is also unfunded by any car company, so nobody pays for the videos to be here. So if you can support, it'd be brilliant. Um, I'm going off to enjoy an Alp now, but until the next time, I will see you on the far side.